Ato no mai haere mai. Welcome uh, to this meeting of the Dunedin City Council's Community and Culture Committee. Uh, it's one o'clock, so we'll get underway. There's, there are no speakers uh, scheduled for our public forum. Uh, I have an apology received from Councillor Chris Staines, absent on council business, um, moved uh, by His Worship the Mayor, seconded by Councillor Benson Pope. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. A confirmation of the agenda. Uh, I'll move that the committee confirm the agenda with uh, the following alteration with regard to Standing Order 2.1, Option C, be adopted as has been the fashion. Uh, seconded, Councillor Elder. Uh, all those in favour? Those against? Uh, that's carried. Uh, declarations of interest, um, noting uh, Councillor Hall's amendment made yesterday. Uh, and also uh, Councillor Steadman's resignation from the District Licensing Committee. Uh, any other amendments to be made to that? Uh, there being none, I'll, I'll move that the committee amend the elected members' interest register and the attendant uh, management plan um, for those interests. Seconded, Councillor Lofiso. Uh, any discussion? No? All those in favour? No. Those against? That's carried. Part five, uh, sorry, part A reports, uh, reports. item five, uh, the Otago Museum report to contributing local authorities of which we are one. Dr. Griffin, welcome back. Any opening remarks or shameful plugs for your staff's extracurricular activities? Yes, kia ora, everybody. Um, Recognising that you're all good at winning elections, um, Today is the annual museum dance-off competition, and my museum, our museum, the Otago Museum, is representing uh, Dunedin as the only representative of Dunedin, and we're up in a real tough fight against um, the South Canterbury Museum in Timaru. And when I left the museum, we were within 25 votes. Um, but if you, um, there's a website, it, um, whenyouworkinamuseum.com, whenyouworkinamuseum.com. Um, you can vote as many times as you want, um, and we want to get through to be the New Zealand representative in the next round. So if, if I could ask you when you do have a spare moment to please vote often, uh, we'd be very, ple very grateful. Um, the winning museum gets to represent New Zealand in an international dance competition. And you may not realize this, but um, our museum has very talented dancers and we've created a video the, um, which you can also watch online. Uh, so if you do have it, I know councillors are really busy, but we need you today. Um, I'd also mention that Timaru District Council have actually got their museum on the front page encouraging people to vote for it. So any help we can have would be great. <laughs> um, joking aside, it's been a really busy period for the museum. We opened uh, the, the report um, that I'm presenting before you went to our board at the end of February. And there's this constant out of phaseness between our board meetings and this committee meeting, which means that you're getting information about um, one and a half months later than we present it to our board but I can't present information to you before I present it to the board. So I do apologize about the fact that you're seeing a report that comes from February rather than the end of March. But my next board meeting is um, in about three weeks time. So that's something I've got to deal with and I apologize for it. Um, but during the period covered by this report, we did open Tahura, um, our new science center. And on the second page of the report, I'd just like to draw your attention to the fact that um, in December, we were with just two weeks opening, we had 167% up uh, on last year's sales in 15 days. Uh, we had a really good January with 93% increase in income, and February was also good. Um, beyond the report, I've got to say that one of the busiest museums in the last five, one of the busiest days in the museum at the last five years happened during, on the Saturday Ed, Ed Sheeran was here. We had over 3,000 people through the door at the museum, which for us is a very big number. And I think it speaks to the success of the, the Sheeran event. And, um, that was great for us. Um, feedback on Tahura has been um, very good, uh, very pleasing. And um, to date, we've sold nearly 1,500 annual passes. Um, and these are the passes that we created to reduce the cost of admission, um, which we, we targeted at locals. Um, and for 60 bucks, you get a year, if you're an adult, uh, of entry to um, Tahura. And it's 40, uh, $45 if you're a child. Uh, we recognize that's still more expensive than some families can afford, uh, but it's a kind of a gesture towards making um, Tahura more affordable for the, for the population. Um, there's a lot in the report, and I don't really want to talk to all of it because you've got other things to discuss. But one thing I would like to call out is um, on page 11, um, 
our Director of Collections and Research, Robert Morris, and uh, Matapura Ellison travelled to Christchurch um, to oversee the return of a tapuna from um, Easter Island um, towards the end of um, February. And that was an important process. Um, this is part of uh, returning material to its um, indigenous um, home. And um, our museum uh, was very pleased to be able to take part in that. And um, the return ceremony was um, a very remarkable event uh, which took place um, at MRI just outside Christchurch. So I do want to call attention to that because that was a very big deal for our museum and actually returning that material was the right thing to do, but very important. Um, other than that, I'm very happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, as you can see, it's a busy period. The museum's doing reasonably well at the moment. And um, beyond this report, you'll see in the next report that we've had a very good March and also a very good April. Uh, thanks, Dr. Griffin. Uh, before I open it up to questions, um, I'll note that councillors will be aware of a, a, a verbal presentation and a written submission to follow from the museum around future capital and operating needs. Um, this isn't the forum to be discussing those, so just a, a note of caution around where our um, forward-looking questions may go. But any questions of the report, Councillor Gary? Um, thank you, Chair, and uh, Dr Griffin, thanks for the very um, wide-ranging report. I just, it was a detail I just wanted to clarify. Page 32, about the Border Clearance TV programme. Uh, that filming was likely to occur in early March. Has that happened? Sorry, which, uh, which page was uh, that? Page 32 of ours, page oh, 16 sorry. of yours. Page six, sorry, I was going to say I didn't so have page 32. Page 16 of yours. Okay, um, let me just refresh my... Top. Um, the Border Clearance TV programme, the filming was due to occur in March. Has that happened and how did it go? Um, yes, that, that did occur in, um, in March and that programme's coming out later in the year. Um, and that's because we have the butterflies and um, it's very interesting mm. the way that whole process works. We have a special permit to bring the butterflies in from uh, the Philippines um, and uh, Puerto Rico. And that whole process was quite of, of some interest to the people who make that programme. So that will be featuring in a in a later programme, I hasten to add that it's all done completely legally and above board, so there's no arrest or anything. It's completely uh, benign in that so regard. So you'll, you'll let us know when that's going yes, to be Yes, we will. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Arda. I'm pleased to see that um, the LEOTC, the, the school participation has gone up incredibly and that you're bringing back um, overnighters because that, that fits in with our social wellbeing strategy as well as many others. Yeah. Um, and I see also that you're putting um, more out in the community. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, um, we've had a big focus on doing more outreach um, for several reasons. Firstly, because we are not just the Dunedin Museum, we're the Otago Museum, and we get funding from regional councils, although that's a little bit controversial, as you may have read in stuff earlier this week. Um, so we do make a point of trying to show some return on the investment that those councils make by actually going out to their regions and doing events and activities. But we've also received significant funding from the Ministry of Business Innovation and um, Employment to do science outreach across the South Island. So we have this thing called Lab in a Box, which is a, a container that fits on the back of a, it's a 20 foot container that fits on the back of a truck and you can truck it into communities. And that's a partnership with the University of Otago. And that allows us to do science activities um, places like Alexandra, um, Awaka we went to, we did astronomy in Awaka and that kind of thing. So all of that stuff um, allows us to go out into the community and take the museum beyond the walls of the museum. And I think that's quite <coughs> important because a lot of people don't come to museums, they're somewhat reticent. And if we can break down those barriers by doing outreach, I think it really does help um, develop support for the museum and hopefully inspire youngsters to take an interest in culture. Um, can that lab in a box go to, say, communities in Dunedin as well, like our outlying communities? Um, well, it's actually going to, I believe it's this Saturday, um, it's at the farmer's market. Um, um, it's the, it, the regional council have asked us to do some support, some of the outreach that they're doing for their um, long-term planning. So it, the lab in a box is going around various places in Otago, and I know it's going to the farmer's market. I can't remember if it's this Saturday, but it's definitely a Saturday in the next few weeks and you'll be able to see it for yourself. So yes, it can go to communities. Um, as long as you can get a truck through the door, uh, we can deploy the lab in a box. That's really exciting, because I, I, I'm excited about youngsters in Dunedin having those barriers removed into um, you know, mm. experiencing science. The, um, another question I want to ask is, 
quite a few, there's, there's a big barrier for some people in um, going into the science, the, the tahura, because of the charge. Is there a community services card kind of lower fee? We have concessions considered? fee, which do reduce it, but unfortunately, and, and schools pricing is um, $5 for a school to come through. But unfortunately, because um, we invested our resources in, in kind of creating tahura, we, we can't make it free entry. So we have had some programs that have been sponsored by external companies to kind of offset admission for certain groups. Um, but the challenge for us is figuring out ways of making, building something like Tahura and giving people access to it. Um, we, we're not in a position to be able to give away free access because it's really important to the business model of the museum going forwards. And it breaks my heart to say that because obviously I would like more and more people to go <coughs> through the door and, um, and for some people we recognise there's a barrier. But what we've done in the past is work with um, people like uh, Perpetual Guardian, for example, which gives supported offset visits to the planetarium, and that will be the way we'd, we'd work in the future probably. But at the moment, we haven't found a company who can, who can do that for us. So you would like sponsorship to some degree to be a enable free passes to people who can't afford to go here? Absolutely, yeah. Um, we, we are very focused on trying to encourage access, um, but as I say, the difficulty for us there is um, it's not something that we can just give away because we spent a lot of money to kind of build the thing. Um, but having said that, we're not just sitting on our laurels and saying that's all we can do. We're, we're working, as I say, to try and find people out in the community who will support. And we do get some people doing that. Oh, thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. Can I just ask a, a follow-up question on that? And it's around the, the annual passes. Mm -hmm. um, was it considered to make them transferable to two people? So if, if, a, if parents... Know, depending yeah. on who had the shift off that morning, could take their child without having to buy two separate annual passes? Yeah, we had. To, uh, there's been a, a little bit of debate about this um, because we didn't initially think of doing that because we needed the money, basically. Um, and it has been something, it's been raised by not a huge number of people, but mm. by a number of people, and we're considering it for going forward. But the impact of that would mean that the income for the museum is less. Um, and at the moment, we're just, we, we, we don't, have enough understanding of how many people are buying the annual passes to know whether it will be a big impact or a little impact. But it's something we definitely look at. Because part of the philosophy of the annual passes is to make that part of the museum that is a paying attraction more accessible to people from Dunedin and the local region. Because uh, they're the only people who really, honestly, would want to buy an annual pass. Um, yeah, and, and the flip side of that is who would buy one if they, who hasn't, who, if they knew it was transferable, but you don't know what the latent no, demand would be. No. So, and, and to be completely honest and, and transparent about it, we didn't even know people would buy the annual passes at the pricing that we set. So it's still a work in progress, and it's only been going for, what is it, four months. Um, but certainly one of the requests that we've had is, can you transfer between parents if you have an annual pass? And what we need to consider, and we haven't had time to consider, is what the financial impact of making that happen would be. It may be significant, it may not be, and um, we just need to do some studies about it. Thank you. Because it's a, valid, it's a very valid point. Any further questions? No, someone would like to move the recommendations? Move Councillor Hall, second to Councillor O'Malley. Any discussion? All those in favour? Aye. Those you. against? That's carried. Dr Griffin, you're free to go. Please, and please Thank vote. You. <laughs> Thank you. Please. Item 6, Community and Culture Non-Financial Activity Report for the quarter ended 31 March 2018, uh, noting that the graph uh, in paragraph 17, uh, Dunedin Chinese Garden visitation numbers was incorrect in the original agenda. This has been updated uh, in both the online versions and the copy uh, that is available on your way in. Um, welcome, Ms Pinfold, Mr Dixon. Uh, any opening remarks you'd like to make about this report? Comment that um, the, 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 <clears throat> the graphs of visitors to the various cultural institutions are uh, impacted to some degree by the very uh, good summer we've had. And um, good weather isn't necessarily a driver of visitors to cultural institutions, um, but uh, a lot of the, the, the minor variations in the pattern are uh, attributable to, to the weather. Questions, councillors? Councillor Benson Pope. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr Chairman. Just on that matter, um, it's noticeable in the 
<coughs> the bar graphs from the residents' opinion survey, both in this report and in the those in the next meeting, there's a greater degree of volatility visible in the more recent um, three, uh, and it pretty much every case. Um, is that a reflection of um, the evolution and refinement of the survey itself? I mean, if I look at the first one, local neighbourhood satisfaction, everyone was everyone was sitting at 86% in 1516 for all four quarters, um, and there wasn't much fluctuation the following year, but there's a bit more, and that's the sort of thing we see in all of them. Is there any explanation for that or observation? Uh, we, ha we have changed the, the way in which we administer the survey, so that so that possibly ex explains why there's you know, why there's variation in the in the patterns. Um, I guess we'll just have to keep we'll keep a close eye on it. Councillor Wiley. Um, thank you. Um, just a quick question. I guess it's a typo more than anything else. When I look at graph seven, eight. Or all the way through to 13. I take it um, this goes December to February was supposed to be Jan to March. Yeah, you've caught me on the hop there. Yes, I mean looking back at the previous, the previous cycles, it sh um, I would guess it should have been. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, make sure that, we'll make sure that's corrected. The, the, um, the period should be, the, the quarters should be the same from year to year. You're, you're correct. Okay, so, so we're not grabbing the December to February data, we're grabbing the January to March data. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. right. Thank you. Any further questions? The Mayor said he will move the recommendations. Oh, sorry, Councillor Gary. Felt invisible there for a moment. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I had a question around uh, Alberston and the visitation numbers um, on page 44, and I note there's been, you know, quite a rise there. And it talks about the cruise ships. Given that we've got an increase in cruise ships in the next season, are we getting to capacity? Because in some of these, particularly in that facility, there is a limit on how many people you can fit in there on a tour. Um, would you have any comment about that in terms of managing future growth? I think that um, you're, you're, you're right. It's a, it's a constrained visitor experience and we have to be mindful of the security and the health and safety of our visitors. Um, I think that the way to accommodate future growth is through uh, taking a more proactive stance with respect to bookings. Uh, at the moment we are Reactive. We, we, we're receiving a very high level of bookings, and we're taking them when they, when they, um, on the terms in which they originally request them. If we start hitting serious capacity issues, then we will need to start being more proactive in how we manage those and in how we um, um, request that, that tour operators schedule their visits. Is that a piece of work that will be looked at? Uh, prior to next season, given that we've got amazing growth uh, predicted yeah. for next season? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the winter period is one where we take stock in a number of areas in Alveston, um, not least the maintenance and care of the, of the facility, but also in planning for the, for the next year, and that's something I can take up with the uh, service manager. Thank you. It was awfully rude of me. I should have introduced at the beginning uh, Mr. Nick Dixon. This is the first time he's appeared before this committee, our new group manager of Aratoi. Um, apologies and welcome. Uh, any further questions? No. The recommendation has been moved by the Mayor. Seconded Councillor Benson Pope. Do you wish to speak to it? I do, um, actually. Um, I think, um, Councillors, this is a really pleasing report. Um, everywhere, it's very, very positive. Every aspect of it is uh, a step up on um, what we were, where we were before, and we were in a pretty good place before. Um, so I think this um, community and culture group within council is working extremely well. Um, we were told uh, during submissions to the 10-year uh, plan that the South Dunedin work is going really, really, really well and is being really well received by the community. There's incredible satisfaction with our cultural facilities. The youth work is getting some traction. 
Um, and I think that, on reflection, it made me realise that while um, we're constantly told, councils are constantly told, um, focus on core services um, and infrastructure, and they're absolutely essential, and they are absolutely essential. The fact is that in any reasonable community, they're taken for granted. They're expected. We're expected to provide um, uh, uh, infrastructure and services uh, at, a, at a, an efficient and effective level uh, to our communities. But actually what adds value for a community and what makes it attractive is some of what we tend to think of as the soft stuff. Um, and the cultural and community needs of, of, our, uh, of our people, of Dunedin, is hugely important in creating the lifestyle offering that we're um, using to, to make this place a better, a better city. Uh, if we just focused on, um, you know, Cut, cut everything back, cut our spending back, and just made sure that the pipes worked and the, and the water worked and, and the sewage worked. Every other city is doing the same thing. We're not going to attract anyone, with um, anyone from outside the city, uh, with what everyone expects. And, and I note too that the preoccupation of this de uh, department of council very much aligns with the with the four well-beings that have been reintroduced into the Local Government Act or are being reintroduced into the Local Government Act. So I just, I think, I, I just want to recognise that the cultural, the cultural and social enhancement is absolutely essential to reinforcing the acknowledged economic and um, um, progress and event attraction and all that kind of thing that's, that's going on and we're, and we're getting great economic benefits from it. But without this, it's meaningless. Um, so well done to the team uh, for your part in, in, in achieving this because I think um, the, the, this is to some extent res responsible for the wonderfully positive, buoyant mood in the city at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lord. Yeah, well, actually, I probably don't need to say it now, but I was almost thinking of uh, very similar comments to what the Mayor's just made, and I was thinking of on page 45, the Easter weekend events program, and just the uh, number of council departments that worked well to make the Ed Sheeran uh, concerts go a good thing, and I just, I just was thinking about the number of people that say, oh, well, it does nothing for our city, or, oh, you roll out these figures, I think... Um, as someone who on Good Thursday or the day before Good Friday travelled to Christchurch and back to Invercargill and back to Dunedin in the same day, uh, the easy part was the three and a half, four hours to Christchurch, then it was 15, 20 mile an hour all the way back to Dunedin, fast trip to Invercargill and then watching all the people come home from the Thursday night event and um, then the next day travelling to Omro to head, head north and the numbers of cars that you saw at every service station, at every cafe, at every fish and chip shop, at every fast food outlet in Omru and Timaru Ashburton on those days was absolutely amazing and um, good time for taking your own sandwiches. But um, I just I just think when I got back, the comments I had from people that had been in the city for the weekend that, hey, you guys got this right, and I sort of felt a bit ashamed saying, hey, well, it's not me, it's the good staff that have been employed. But there were some, there were some very positive comments from some people who are traditionally not council supporters either. So. I'd just like to reiterate that, to, and not just to you guys, but also to the economic development and everyone else, but I think it was a very good effort. Thank you, Councillor Lord. I look forward to you making those comments again when we discuss that event in the next committee meeting. Um, further speakers? Oh, sorry, Councillor Vanivers. Um, I must uh, agree with the previous speakers, and the Mayor in particular, about the buoyant mood and how positive that is for the city in lots of ways that are probably quite hard to measure. Um, uh, highlighting the importance of culture to attract people to the city also uh, must agree with entirely, 100%. I think, however, that there is another aspect to culture which we don't yet really capitalise on, and that is the potential to actually monetize the products of local artists. If you look at the uh, financial uh, spin that we get from having the concerts here, that's all well and good. But if you look at, for instance, the kind of money that uh, was generated by, say, Ralph Hotary in his um, uh, paintings, or uh, even by the Chills uh, in some of their products, I believe that there is a role for us as 
the DCC to actually uh, create a structure in which we don't just promote events, but we actually promote an environment in which artists can monetize their products. And to see uh, art as, as much of an industry, a productive industry, as your more traditional bricks and mortar or engineering industries or whatever. Dunedin has a wonderful and arguably unrivaled cultural heritage, uh, which we have singularly failed to uh, recognise and certainly failed to monetize in many respects. So I think that the, uh, the buoyant mood that we've had, the positive feelings that we've been getting as a city around a lot of the cultural um, uh, amenities that we have, uh, you know, the, the um, cruise ships are obviously responding very well to it, um, uh, but there's a lot more that we can do, that we can do and should do, especially for the cruise ships, than ship them off to Alveston or, or wherever. Wonderful though Alveston is. I think it may even be time that we need to look at the long-term value of cruise visitors and set up a dedicated, attractive um, uh, centre in Port Chalmers that can then be a kind of clearinghouse to all the other uh, amenities that we have that we don't currently have. I have had uh, comments from some uh, people that have arrived on a cruise ship that they took one look at Port Chalmers and decided, well, maybe they would just stick with the amenities that were on the ship, not realising actually what was available here. One of these individuals um, decided to go and have a look at the Eden anyway. Um, he's still here, and that was 10 years ago. So, yeah, monetising culture is not something we should be shy of. Uh, seeing culture of all different kinds, visual arts, musical arts, whatever, as an industry is something I think the DCC can do more to help promote. Thank you. Further speakers? Um, just in response to Count of Councillor Vanderviz's comments, um, heard a great story from a local businessman in Port Chalmers recently when they were asked by a cruise ship passenger uh, when they all went back on the ship uh, and left, did they all get to go home uh, as if the entire town existed as a novelty in and of itself uh, to, a, to, a, to appeal to the, to the visitor? But, um, but no, no, on some days I'm, I'm sure they wish it was. Um, but with regard to the, the recognition of the, both the cultural and the economic value of our creative industries, I think that's, um, that's a point worth reiterating. And it is a point that is, uh, they are both... Um, uh, very much recognised as core tenets of Aratoi, our arts and culture strategy, and in terms of uh, particularly developing the business side of things, um, we are um, doing a fantastic work that would be great to see detailed um, more thoroughly perhaps at a future meeting of this committee, uh, as much as the one part-time employee that we have in the economic development unit has allowed us to progress that. Um, so again, um, for us to do uh, better work in this area, it's um, behoven upon this body uh, to better resource that work in future budget discussions uh, as, uh, as we see the, the results and the momentum gather around that and I look forward to seeing Mr Deka appear before us hopefully at the next, uh, next round. Um, with nothing further, I'll put it, all those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. Item 7, the festival, Festivals and Events Plan 2018 through 2023. Welcome Ms Graham and Ms Gunn. Any comments you wish to make before we take questions? Um, I actually just wanted to take the opportunity to um, say a couple of things. One is that we had, in the second round of consultation around the draft plan, we had overwhelmingly positive response. There are a, a list of um, amendments which people have suggested, but overall people felt we were heading 
in the right direction, and that was from very small uh, organisers of very small events and very large scale events in the city. Um, and I also wanted to take the opportunity to acknowledge the hard work, particularly of Tammy Jackman and uh, the other people who, within the council's working group that was sitting around this um, this plan. It, took, it has taken quite a long time. Uh, we recognise, but uh, really wanted to acknowledge their contribution to the point we're at today. Thank you. More questions? Councillors? No? Would someone like to move the recommendations? Moved Councillor Elder, seconded Councillor Hall. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Elder? Yes, I do. I, I agree with Joy that, in fact, this was amazing work. It was really well done. The research was thorough and also the consultation was thorough and the documentation of that consultation was thorough. So I just want to say this is a fantastic piece of work. Um, seeing Ed Sheeran and the successful weekend and all the work um, around community and, and events um, again contributes to the city in a huge way. Um, and um, I just I want to say thank you. Thank you. Further speakers? No? Your right of reply seems somewhat redundant. Uh, I'll put it. All those in favour? Right. Sorry about that. Those against? It's carried. Thank you. That was painless. Uh, item 8. Oh, it's the both of you again. Mayor's Task Force for Housing Update. Any introductory remarks? Uh, no, not this time. <laughs> Questions? Councillors? Moved Councillor Wilson. There's a seconder. Seconded Councillor Elder. Any discussion? I would point out that this, um, with the developments in the city coming up, like the building of the hospital, etc., um, the, the, the issues that are thrown up around housing are becoming more urgent. Uh, and more pertinent every day. So this is this is we. I think it was really good that we um, saw this coming and set up got this um, task force. It enabled us to get it set up in a considered way. Um, and I, and I, but I just note that it is it is going to be doing some really important work because the the need for housing uh, is going to increase uh, drastically over the next five to ten years, and we we want to be ahead of it if we don't want unforeseen consequences. Thank you. Councillor Benson Pope. <clears throat> just, um, I think that's a very timely alert from the Mayor, and I just wanted to lodge with staff my concern that there is good integration between um, this group uh, and the discussions that are being had by the Chief Executive, the local advisory group uh, that's been constituted around accommodation issues in respect of the hospital and so on, because um, it is the same discussion. Uh, and, and the same similar solutions will apply to both. So um, if you could make sure that that um, connection happens, that would be really good. Thank you. Councillor Elder. Um, with, with the upcoming um, housing um, needs, are we looking at working with the Polytech and other institutions about um, training our youth in electricians, plumbers, etc., and making the most of that? Yeah, the discussion is quite broad, and when it gets to things around capacity and affordability and the supply side of things, no doubt all of those things will be um, canvassed and a part of this conversation. Yeah. Thanks. So, can I add one element in respect in that respect? The, the last meeting of the tertiary sector steering group, uh, which I chaired in the absence of the mayor, this matter was raised, uh, and the Polytechnic is only too aware of the potential they have to do what um, Christchurch did in terms of developing trades skills pronto for, in our case, for um, the up to 1,200 people who ultimately will be here at some period during the eight, seven or eight years of that project being underway. So there's enough lead time for that to happen and they're certainly on the case. 
positive news and far more positive circumstances uh, in our case. Anything, any further speakers? There being none, I'll put it. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. All that remains is item nine, items for consideration by the chair. Do we have any? No? 1.35, I declare the meeting deceased. We'll be back in five minutes with Planning and Environment.